Today, we will be creating pop art ice cream cones. The first thing that you need is some pasteboard. If you have a compass, you can use it. If not, I have a little trick here where I use the ruler to create my curved shape. You can then soften the card to make it more flexible by rolling it up or rolling it against a jar. If you feel the cone is too big, you can cut some of the area away. Now, you're going to attach these pieces together and you can use a variety of different media to do that. I've used liquid Yoohoo glue, staples and masking tape. This is probably a bit of overkill, but I want to make sure that this is firmly attached. Once your cone is complete, it is time to add your decorative ridges. I have played around with this method and found that if I add rope before I plaster, I can create a similar effect. Once it's done, leave it to dry, and I'm a massive fan of prepping supplies. So cut up some newspaper into strips and then scrunch it up. You will probably need about two generous handfuls depending on the size of your cone. Prep your masking tape, which you can attach to your table edge. You may need to stop and top it up a few times during the process of creating your ball. Keep adding and massaging until it fits snugly into the cone. When the size is right, glue and tape the two together. Now it's time to let this dry. And when it's drying, you can prep your plaster. You're going to cut the bandages into finer strips, but make sure that they are not exposed to air for too long. Plaster stops working properly and becomes really hard. You may need to cover your worktop with some plastic as plaster tends to get really messy. Half fill a bowl with water and make sure you have a place to put your wet plastered cone to dry. Dip each plaster strip into water for a few seconds. Shake off the excess water and then massage onto the armature. That is the technical name for the skeleton or the framework used by an artist. You will probably only need to complete one layer of plaster, so cut about 25 to 30 strips of plaster bandage. When it is dry, you're going to layer it with gesso. You might want to put a couple of layers of gesso or primer on to whiten up your armature. Once that's all dried, you will want to add your air dried clay. I'm going to add mine to represent frosting or topping. If you don't finish using all of your air dry clay, seal it away, otherwise it will dry out and you will not be able to reuse it. Air dry clay probably needs about six to 12 hours to dry. You can see here that I've used my water bottle to roll out the air dry clay. If you have a roller, that would probably work better. Once you've attached all your air dry clay, set it aside to dry, preferably overnight. When dry, cover your sculpture with gesso or primer and set aside to dry or use a hairdryer to speed up the process. And this is the part that becomes very theatrical and colourful. This is when you're going to start adding your colours. Now I like to plan my designs ahead of time and I pop them in my sketchbook so that I know what I'm going to do. Start with background or block colours first. I used acrylic paint here. I love the vibrancy and the flexibility they provide me. You can paint amazing flat areas or you can mix them to create a great tonal range. Acrylics work best if you put on at least two or three layers. After this is done, set aside to dry or use your trusty hairdryer. And now it's pattern time. Borrowing inspiration from the 60s op artist Bridget Riley, Japan's amazing Yayo Kusama and America's Jen Stark, I went to town with my acrylic and Posca markers. 
I love bold and bright patterns and designs. They make me feel really, really upbeat. Now, to finish this off, you're going to need a layer or two of acrylic varnish. This will absolutely help your colours to pop by about 30%. Thanks for watching and enjoy.